This is Kherson in southern Ukraine. It's a city that some people here have described as Ukraine's forgotten front line. My name is Jerome Starkey. I'm the defense editor at The Sun newspaper, and this is our weekly roundup of the most important news from the war in Ukraine. Because I'm in Kherson, I thought I would focus on what's happening here. This is a city that was captured by Russian forces in the first phase of the war, and it remained under Russian occupation for about nine months until those Russian forces were forced to retreat last November. Ukrainian troops had choked their supply lines, and this, the only city, the only regional capital that Russia had captured, indeed the only territory on the right bank of the Dnieper River was ceded as Russian forces retreated. Unusually, the city was spared most of the destruction that other places, other epicenters of the fighting have suffered. And that's because both when it was captured in the very beginning and then when it was retaken by Ukraine's armed forces last November, it was spared the street to street fighting and artillery bombardments that other places, notably Mariupol and Bakhmut, Severodonetsk and Lysychansk have all endured. But that is now changing since Russian forces have retreated to the left bank of the river. They've increased their artillery attacks, their drone attacks uh, and their mortar attacks on this city. And people pay a price here with their lives and their limbs. Indeed, the building behind me uh, has had many of its windows blown out as a consequence of that shelling. This square, when I was last here in November, was packed with people, but now large parts of the city feel eerily empty. Only this week, in this last week, there's been one mortar bomb has hit a hospital and it killed a doctor on his first day of work, seriously wounded a young female nurse who was standing next to him and left four other medics needing hospital attention. We've also been to St. Catherine's Cathedral, which in this, in the last few days was struck by an incendiary device while the city was being shelled. The, the, the cathedral was built by Russia a few hundred years ago as a symbol of its conquest by the then Duke Potemkin, who was annexing these lands in what was known as Novorossiya, New Russia, on behalf of Catherine the Great. This St. Catherine's Cathedral, built as a tribute to her, was set ablaze by Russian shelling. When the firemen came to extinguish that blaze, they were hit by a secondary, uh, secondary strike, a double tap. At least four firemen were injured. And we also know in that same bombardment, at least three civilians were injured when a bus they were on board uh, moving through the city was hit by Russian shelling. So here in Kherson, there is a feeling that every day, it's a, it's a large provincial capital, many, many people have fled, but there's a sense here that people are suffering daily bombardments, perhaps going unnoticed. While people in Kherson may describe this as the forgotten front, there has been significant developments in southern Ukraine, particularly on the island of Jaril Gach, which is a peninsula, a spit of land on the southern edge of the province, which overlooks the occupied Crimean Peninsula. Now, Ukrainian officials said that they detected a group of Russian forces practicing training on this peninsula and they struck them with long-range HIMARS missiles which have a range of about uh, 70 miles. They, they haven't been specific, they say a number of Russian units, a number of Russian vehicles and infantry were killed in those attacks. But the main focus of Ukraine's war effort remains uh, in the south-central Zaporizhia front and further east uh, around Bakhmut. There in Bakhmut, we know that uh, Ukrainian forces have been making advances in the direction of Klivkivka, which is a settlement to the south, south of uh, Bakhmut, which they say is, is strategically important to take, to take before they can try and retake uh, Bakhmut itself. In, uh, in the Zaporizhia oblast as well, Ukrainian forces uh, have been trying to cement the gains, which we reported on last week. But the impression we get from Ukrainian forces is that is that they, they haven't yet made the all important strategic breakthrough uh, in the Russian front lines, which will allow them to try and exploit uh, and advance, make significant advances. One of the questions we had, and thank you for your questions, was about how serious is the Russian assault in Kupiansk, uh, in sort of north, in the northeastern front. Um, that appears to be Russia's main effort. They're throwing uh, significant resources, men and munitions, and, and, and making some gains. 
Uh, it is probably an attempt to distract or, or stretch Ukrainian troops uh, to pin them in those positions so that Ukraine's unable to commit more resources either to the Bakhmut front or to the Zaporizhia front. The other question we've had is when will we see the UK Challenger tanks uh, engaged in battle uh, in Ukraine? Now, of course, the UK was the first Western nation to uh, promise Ukraine Western battle tanks. Uh, Britain has donated 14 Challenger 2s, one of the most formidable battle tanks uh, that any country possesses. We know that the Challenger 2s are part of Ukraine's strategic reserve. This is a force of men, vehicles, weapons and munitions that is being held back uh, so that once the, the troops that are currently engaged, if and when they're able to make a decisive breakthrough, then Ukraine's commanders will be able to commit the reserve to exploit that advantage and push through and disrupt Russian lines and hopefully, you know, fight them in, in what, what, from a military point of view, would be the soft underbelly rather than uh, throwing them at these incredibly well dug in defensive positions. And it's those incredibly well dug in defensive positions which are slowing up Ukraine's advance at the moment. Uh, of course all of this comes against a backdrop of increasing repression in Russia. We know Ukraine has kept up its drone attacks. Most recently uh, Russian officials saying that they shot down seven Ukrainian drones. Uh, today we're expecting to see Vladimir Putin's leading opposition uh, figure his his political nemesis Navalny uh, sentenced in a Moscow court. He's facing up to 20 more years in prison and ostensibly for daring to stand up to uh, Russian dictator Vladimir Putin and challenge his authoritarian and indeed corrupt rule. That's all from me today. Uh, please, as before, if you do have any questions, please uh, make them in the comments and we'll endeavour, we'll do our best to answer them uh, in next week's episode. Thank you.